Hey guys, Jim here with Simple Little Life. Welcome to another edition of Tool Time Tuesday. For the knife guy, the people that love knives, one of the biggest and most contentious topics is knife sharpening. There are so many opinions, very strong opinions. People fight valiantly for their particular knife sharpening method or another, and that's great. I personally believe that there's a lot of different ways to do the same job. If you get a knife really, really sharp, honestly, I don't care that much how it happened. If it's a good, sharp, usable edge, that's fantastic. One of the first knife sharpeners I ever featured on this channel was this. This is the paper wheel system or the razor sharp edge making system. And honestly, when I first started making knives, the hardest thing for me was getting them sharp. And this was pretty much the first tool that kind of let me very quickly get a razor sharp. Like you can shave your arm hair off like, like any knife nut. But this was great for that. The one danger with these is that. With it running so fast, one of the main concerns, the biggest complaint I have with this method is overheating the blade. It's the heat generated from the process. Now on the one wheel, we've got 180 grit uh, aluminum oxide. Is it? No, silicone carbide. It's a little paste. They give you a little jar of this for refreshing your wheel. And then the fine side is just the plain pressed paper in which you would put on some white jeweler's rouge. This side is slotted. I imagine that's to help with heat dissipation. This side is solid. A lot of people make their own versions of this out of MDF. What I had thought, if I could get a variable speed bench grinder. Looking around all the 110 volt variable speed bench grinders, they only vary their speeds between 2000 RPM and 3600 RPM and I was wanting a little slower than that if I could besides the variable ones are kind of a lot more money But I just found this little sucker 8 inch low speed grinder with a work lamp what? Key feature 1750 RPM. That's half the speed as my other grinder now It says right here ideal for sharpening wood lathe chisels gouges knives and planer blades now if you can freehand sharpen a planer blade on this Man, you've got some mad skills. It's also a half horsepower, eight inch wheels, and then it comes with a diamond wheel dressing tool. Now I had sacrificed my bench grinder to put the paper wheels on it. And ever since then, there's been the odd time when I'm like, I wish I had a bench grinder. There's such a, such a handy tool in the shop, but it's been gone. It's been dedicated to that service. But if this thing works out, I'll get my bench grinder back and have a better version of a paper wheel knife sharpener. All right, with the power of the telephoto lens. We got a shot there. Yeah, you won't be able to see it too well, but let's just, let's see what happens. A little bit of browning, a little discoloration there. I think this pass will bring us some heat. Yes. <laughs> okay, so you see that? We have changed the just the bevel, the secondary bevel we're putting in, we've changed that to like a blue. So that's a bad thing. Oh, we got a nice hot spot right there. Now, this was probably about 20 thousandths of an inch before I started grinding and we're almost at our cutting edge. Um, I'm gonna bring it to the cutting edge. Again, trying to heat this thing up. I'm trying to ruin this temper. Okay, we got a lot of heat going on in there. Good, we basically wrecked this steel, I believe. Okay, so first pass there, we're just kind of cleaning it up. You can see it leaves a really nice surface finish. So here again, we've got some more heat, and usually it's when you're bringing to the end. So we're starting here, the heat's kind of being carried along, and by the time you get out here, you've got a little time to work. And um, boom, overheat, you see our discoloration in there. The one thing to notice as well though, is just look how, how shiny that secondary bevel is there. That's one thing I really like about this system, is that it leaves a really nice edge. And when you've got like a mirror polish on your cutting edge, like the secondary bevel, 
it's pretty impressive. I mean, you look at that, it's like, oh wow, that is so great. And uh, the performance is amazing too. These things, you sharpen all, it's, I mean, just boom. Most knives, like if it's already had an edge on it, I can spend less than one minute and bring it right back to shaving sharp. But I really am interested to see how much of a difference there is when you're cutting with a slower grinder. This was a uh, display model. It was the last one that was in Calgary. $129 in Canadian peso, so maybe a hundred bucks American. Got a diamond dressing tool for truing up your things. This would actually be handy for when I need to um, put new grit on that wheel. Look how cheap that is. <laughs> it's a piece of square tubing <laughs> with some of this stuff epoxied on or something. Wow, that's special. This is Chineseium. Like that's not even aluminum, that is, oh, that's bad. This might have been a mistake. This is a, a big deal because I've seen one of these things explode in a shop. Whenever you're firing up a bench grinder, and they'll teach you this at trade school, and I, I don't even do this all the time, but when you're firing up a bench grinder, you always want to stand to the side because all the inertia is in line with the wheels. If a wheel has something wrong with it, a crack, it's gonna blow up and it's coming, poof, it's gonna come in a line with the wheels anywhere along here. Obviously the guards are designed to hopefully prevent that, but for, especially the first time, like a brand new machine, I'm not gonna stand here and flick the switch. I'm gonna stand over here and flick the switch. Ooh. A lot of imbalance in there. <laughs> it's actually really bad. But look at that. That is nice and slow. Yeah, that's really blah, 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 blah. not not a fan of that. You can see the wobble on these wheels. Probably fairly uh, craptastic wheels. The one thing I need to check out before I get too crazy is it it has a five eighths arbor because the eight inch paper wheels I have it's a five eight five eighths arbor. I'm pretty sure that's kind of a standard thing. But, okay, let's, uh, let's try this. Stand to the side. Noticeably slower. Oh wow, that really hogs down the old material. Freak out, that thing is awesome. It's a very toothy edge, I should say. Should also have safety glasses on. Now this thing cuts very, very cool. I mean, we've got full on burrs on this side now. Um, so there's what we've just put on it. I mean, it's very, very coarse. It's 120 grit, but my goodness, I'm actually very, very impressed to kind of explore all possibilities of this video what would happen if you stop there and hit it with a strop a few times it is still very very toothy yeah I mean this probably would cut rope quite nicely but it's a very kind of a sawing you can see how coarse that cut is it's very very toothy so very cool, like not a lot of heat generation, which is, you know, kind of why I'm looking at this whole setup, but this is way too coarse for sharpening knives or chisels or planer blades, not a chance. Not a chance. If you want to sharpen a saw, or, or turn a blade into a, a very fine tooth saw, this might be your ticket. With that being said, let's take this apart. Again, I just want to make sure this is a 5 8 arbor. Wow, look at look at that wheel. So you see they kind of put this material in here to center the stone. This one's already all broken and that was not me. Yep, so that is a 5 8 arbor. I can use these on the regular grinder. The max RPM is 3800. That one's rated for 36, so I am totally thinking I might just save these and put them on. I wouldn't be surprised if even all the shrouding would just transfer over. Your stones should always have a ring to them. It's not like you don't want to hit it with anything hard, but with your finger. If there's a crack in the stone, you don't get that ring. It's just a thud. Okay, let's go take the wheels off that grinder.
do not remember this being so tight. Maybe I do. Even pressure, even pressure. That's the key. Wow, this is ridiculous. Now, one thing I have had to do, um, I think these wheels are about three quarters of an inch wide. Those are one inch, so I have had to shim it. Um, you know, you've got your cups on either side, these cup washers. I have actually shimmed it with some other accoutrements to make it fit. So that's something to keep in mind. If you buy one of these setups, you might go to put it on and be like, what? The wheel only comes to there. Just put your other cup on the outside so you're still holding it the way they intend to and just get a nice fitting shim over there. A couple washers, whatever. You just don't want it loose and, and vibrating, but that's what you may have to do. There we go. All right, let's see what we can do with this now. So this was the edge from the white wheels. We saw it cuts like a, cuts like a saw. I like that. I like that a lot. Cool. One thing I love to do with these sharpeners, you know, everybody talks about the burr, pulling the burr and you kind of feel for the burr. When I'm working with these sharpeners with an overhead light, just looking down here, I can actually see the burr. So it makes it really nice when I know that I've got even edge thickness. Once I've ground everything down to a burr, I can just do a quick pass. Look down it, okay, I see burrs everywhere. Sometimes you'll see a burr here, here, wherever. Um, but it's a really nice little visual and that's one advantage to working like this is that you can look and see the burr. A lot of people tell me I should be running this backwards. It's a personal preference thing. I hated it. I hated, you know, obviously have to run the motor backwards. You can unbolt it and just switch it around so you still have the, the on off switch on the front. But I like this. This is how I grind. This is how I sharpen. It just works really well for me. Let's try this here now. So we've got our burr bolt. Much nicer cutting action. Do a little better yet. So it definitely stays much, much cooler. Love it. It's nice, nice utility cutting edge. I mean, this was 20 thousandths of an inch, but uh, there's nothing wrong with that. Not sure if we're ready for a foam book paper test, but let's just have a look. Oh yeah, it's not, got a little hang up right there. The big, the big thing with the paper test too, is it's not necessarily how sharp your knife is, but it lets you know if there's any areas along the blade or that it's consistently sharp. I mean, so it's cutting great. But the nice, the thing I'm looking for with this test is that it cuts the whole way. You want to start at the back, at the bottom, go the way to the tip. So you see it cut very, very similarly the whole length of that blade. So there's, there's a nice even edge on here. That tells me that pretty much from here to here is sharp. A lot of times uh, when you need to take it further, you'll be going and it'll hang up somewhere in the middle. It just feels different. That's the main reason. Obviously a sharp knife does this, but there's a lot of ways to prove how sharp a knife is. The thing I really like about the paper test is that it shows you, I mean, we saw when it was like a saw blade, it was kind of like, it, yes, it cut through. That didn't mean it was actually sharp. Um, and just by the burrs that it left on there, right? So that's it. Now, does it shave? I'm a little nervous about doing this. For the very reason that YouTube demonetized some of my videos because I shaved. And it looks too much like self-pain. Yeah, we're shaving there. We're totally shaving. Isn't that disgusting? All right, so what conclusions can we draw up from this? 
I would say that was a well worthwhile investment. $130 and it's noticeably slower, noticeably less heat. And I, I love those, those paper wheels. I mean, they do, they do a fantastic job. They're very fast, they're very efficient. There's a lot of people that say, you know what, everything should be done wet. Even the slightest little bit of heat on, on a, like a, almost a microscopic level is going to ruin the temper. And maybe that's true. I understand the logic behind it, but I also understand the fact that I can sharpen a knife on there and it gets really, really sharp and it stays really sharp. So, you know what? Don't kid yourself. This is a great way to sharpen a knife. One of many great ways. And I hope you found this video useful. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. Maybe consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. Right now I'm in the middle of a 30 day video challenge. So I'm trying to make a video every single day for 30 days and it's not very easy. I'm kind of getting excited and I don't really know what to make videos of. Uh, but if you got ideas for videos you'd like to see, let me know. That'd be great. Thanks so much for watching guys. Cheers.